Welcome to Actions and Limits. My name is Justin Atherton. I'm the Peak Performance Consultant for Confidence Unchained. With me as always is Paul Fortune. Paul is a mindset coach and the founder of A Call to Action. And together, we make Actions and Limits. Welcome to the show, the podcast where we talk about the actions we can take and the limits we create. Make sure to check us out on Instagram or Facebook to stay updated on all the latest content. Um, also, YouTube, your favorite podcast platform. Paul, we are now on uh, Amazon Alexa. Um, so make sure that you're following us and subscribing so you don't miss a single episode. Paul, another week, another great guest. Um, we have Shay Dominguez coming on uh, the show with us. I know uh, you were on her podcast, like you're on many other podcasts out there. So uh, looking forward to bringing her out, man. Yeah, absolutely. And she's doing so much stuff with the comedy, the acting, the rapping. Yeah. Uh, just, just a brave person. Um, you know, it's you need a strong, strong stomach to do comedy, you know. To, to put yourself out there, to be that vulnerable is not an easy thing. So it yeah. takes a special type of person to want to do this type of work. And, um, and I, I praise her for wanting to do it and doing it. So it'll be a fun uh, interview for sure. Yeah, you really have to be able to handle a, a lot of flack too because, you know, there's a lot of hecklers out there, you know, especially if it's like one of those, you know, small intimate type settings you know, where, you know, you can hear the audience or they're saying stuff to you. And, and from a, what it looks like is she, is she does a lot of improv. So they're even shouting out suggestions or whatever. It's kind of, they, they su suggest that, or they want that type of interaction. And, you know, I, I enjoy going to comedy shows and I like sitting up front. I almost like it if they like pick on me, you know, uh, my girlfriend doesn't like it when we sit in the front row because she doesn't want to be picked on. But I like that aspect of interacting. But I know I've been in a couple shows that have been bad and uh, voiced my opinion to the uh, the comedian. So you heckled them? Yeah, there was. Oh there my was goodness one, gracious! There was. Yeah, it wasn't the. It wasn't like overt, but it was. I would remember. I remember it exactly because I we were in Vegas. And it was a, a few different people up on stage and they had, you know, one lady come out that I guess she must have been new to comedy because she had a little notebook with her. She's up there and her jokes were not great. <laughs> they, it, you know what it was? It was really bad timing because it was right after 9-11 and she was doing a lot of jokes about she was Middle Eastern and she was doing a lot of jokes about Middle East and like terrorists. And it was just not landing well with anyone in the audience. And I remember she made a comment. She's like, well, I'm going to try something different. And it was so quiet. I remember saying it out loud. I said, please. <laughs> and she obviously heard me because she kind of looked up was like, Oh crap. But I'm, I'm sure that that affected her. That was many years ago. Like I said, that was probably like 2002 when that happened. But um, man, that was a long time ago. But um, yeah, I mean, so it happens. You know, you get heckless. Like you said, you have a strong stomach, strong mental, you know, uh, ability to, to withstand, you know, the audience chiming in on what you're doing and how well you're doing. Um, so you got to give her props for putting herself out there in all those different aspects, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I hope that comedian uh, recovered from your heckling and now is, uh, you know, <laughs> traveling the world as a, as a uh, top-notch comedian to, yeah, uh, today. You know, I, I hope she is, too. I hope she is, too. I hope she learned from, from that experience. <laughs> I can see the disapproval in your face, Paul, which... <laughs> I mean, because it takes a lot of a lot of uh, huspa to get up in front of somebody and, and make them laugh. And, you know, I don't know. I 
I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to heckle somebody in that situation because I know how hard it is to get up there and, and sure. do it. So, uh, you know, to I each their it. own. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and bring out Shay. And I promise I won't heckle her, you know, <laughs> what she's doing. So Shay Dominguez is currently based in Atlanta, Georgia, where she is a comedian, rapper, and podcaster. After joining a world-renowned comedy club in Los Angeles and getting on a house team after two years of nonstop improv, a bad end to a relationship made her question a lot of stuff in her life, her insecurities, confidence, and relationship with herself. She took the next year off comedy to create music with her best friend and business partner, Robert, and released an album within the last year. She has since gotten back into comedy, creating TikToks, which have gained phenomenal traction and a loyal fan base. And because of her love of personal development, she has a podcast called Level Up with Shay, where she interviews successful business owners, entrepreneurs, artists, and more to ask how they've leveled up in their lives. She continues to make people laugh, motivate, and inspire, and creates more music to come. She refuses to stay in any sort of box and encourages others to follow what makes them happy as well. Find her on TikTok and Instagram, and uh, she's got a website and some other things that she's involved with. So everyone, uh, let's welcome out Shay Dominguez. So everyone, welcome Shay Dominguez to the show. Shay, so glad to have you here on the Accent to Limits podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, I know Paul and I were checking out a lot of your content. You're into so many different things. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is what is your main focus right now? Like, what is what is the main project that you're working on right now? Uh, my main project is comedy. Okay. And I make I have these sketch characters called Gary and Mary, which I have developed over quarantine. Like they came out of quarantine. It was really this new thing. Uh, but yeah, that's my main thing right now. Okay. And you've been in comedy for a long time though, right? I'd say my entire life, (laughs) uh, um, you know, unintentionally, uh, but comedy for the past five and a half years, once I really stepped into the idea that, oh, wow, this is a, this is a living. You can make this a living, you know, it's not just joking around with your family and your friends. Sure. Yeah. Jay, talk to me about your, your upbringing. I know you come from a, a small town and uh, how, how'd you get into coming to LA? Cause that's a big move because I know you come from a small town. So explain the, uh, the story there. Yeah. I come from a small town of 600 people. So technically a village <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I mean, my high school was named Cornfield high. We would drive tractors to work, you know, on homecoming week, like that type of town in Illinois. Um, so about an hour Southeast of St. Louis. Uh, so yeah, just very small town. And I stayed there until, you know, obviously until I went to college, even some of college, uh, there's just a lot of moving parts with that. But part of college, I came back and I moved home for a semester until my family and I were like, we can't do this anymore. Um, But then I moved to St. Louis to, to go to finish up my graduate or my undergraduate degree and then my graduate degree. So I think St. Louis was like a stepping stone to LA. People were like, what? You come from Illinois, small towns. St. Louis was kind of like a warm up to get me ready. Uh, And then in St. Louis, after I graduated with uh, my graduate degree in marketing, I, I didn't want to work behind a desk. I just like, didn't like I had, I had worked with people in offices before and I just saw their lives and no offense to, to people who do that. Um, some people love it and some people love that structure, but it just wasn't for me. So I refused to use my degree in any way. And I I was working at a Starbucks and I was a personal trainer. Like I was doing all these part-time jobs and I met a a person at Starbucks and they were like, you should try improv. You would really like it. And that's how it works out. Like, like they, they call improv a cult. It's just like, you should try this out. It's fun. And then it turns into. Why why a cult? Why, why do they say it's a cult? Because 
you pay for all of these classes, but you don't get paid to perform. Mm. So it's like you're giving all this money to these theaters but then, you know, they have some house teams where people go and they buy tickets to go to the shows, but you never get paid to perform. Sounds like so, school to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's another why. form of school. <laughs> um, so I don't know why specifically a cult. I, I think people are just like people will do anything. I when I was in L.A., when I moved out to L.A., I would stay out um, to an improv jam so you basically just get on stage and somebody gives out a suggestion a banana which is a terrible suggestion uh, and you just make scenes off of that and I would go until 2 a.m like a few nights a week have to get up go to Starbucks again because uh, I worked at Starbucks out in LA too and so I think it was the fact that people were just obsessed with it yeah. And they'll do anything to get on stage. And that's what about it. that is, you know, creates that obsession. Is it the attention? Is it getting up there in front of people and, and like just making people laugh for you? What, what was the, the biggest draw? I love making people laugh. It's such a good feeling. And the fact that you get up there for 10, 15 minutes, however long it is. And then you get off and it's an accomplishment. Like people, you tell people you do improv and other people are like, whoa, no, I couldn't, I could never do that. And so it's like, it's something that not a lot of people would do, you know, kind of like stand up or something like that. It just sure. takes a certain type of, I want to say confidence, but a lot of comedians are not confident, but it's a, it takes a certain type of confidence to, to actually get on stage. So, so what do you think that is then? Like that, you know, if it's not confidence, then what is, what's propelling you to be up there? Or, or what are you seeing with other comics that, that aren't confident, but still able to get up there and perform? Like, where's that, where's that line? I think pe these people don't have a choice. Mm. I, I, I mean, I think comedy is truly a gift that people have because right. they've developed it over the years of, I mean, for me specifically, just having to dodge conversations. And so I can be very witty, uh, you know, in, in, in conversation. And that really comes into play with improv because you have right. to be quick on your feet. So I think these things are just really gifts that are given to us. And it's like, are you gonna get on stage or are you just gonna live your life not doing it? So I think at the end of the day, you just, you just do it. Do you have aspirations to get on SNL? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I say that because I think it's a different type of comedy for me. It's very character-y. Uh, and I, I did a class at the Groundlings in LA, which so many people come from so many people from SNL come from and I was not good uh, but I think it was also just me being more comfortable with myself and my comedy my comedy and improv I get to be myself a lot of the time but when you step into a character you you become somebody else uh, and I just wasn't used to that so I, I enjoy the comedy and I enjoy like growing and being able to be a character. Uh, but as far as SNL, no. Have you ever uh, done stand up? No, but I actually started writing my first set tonight. Nice. Oh, did you? Yeah. You want you want to premiere it here on the Action no, Celebs oh podcast? My gosh. On the spot like that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready. Uh, but yeah, I you know so many people have asked me, oh, do you do stand up? Because that's what people think. I think as soon as you say comedian, and I say no, and you know I don't know why. It's just scary. It's really scary because improv again you're thinking on your feet, you're making stuff up. So people can be like, that was great. Or oh, that was, that wasn't too good, but she made it up. Sure. But with stand up, you're writing your own stuff and you're being judged on your writing. Like you thought that was funny. 
you know, so that's, that's why I've kind of put it off for so long, but I, it's one of those things where it's like, if, if it's on my mind, if it's coming up over and over again, it's something that I have to do. Facing your fears, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, I've never done stand up before, but I've done many presentations and I try to start with like kind of a, a light antidote. Mm -hmm. And I've had situations where I, I thought this was going to get a laughter and I, I, I went with it and I got crickets. So I couldn't, I could understand how, you know, you know, as a stand up comedian, how stressful it is to, to get laughs. I mean, that, that is a high stress uh, position. So I, I feel you on that. Yeah, it is. Oh man, I can just picture that too. Crickets when you're like, when you're waiting for, for laughter. It's yeah. No, and normally you get a, cur you know, in this situation, cause I'm not a stand up comedian. Normally you get like a courtesy. He, 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 I got nothing. nothing. And I was like, wow. It threw my timing off the rest of the presentation. It took me about two or three minutes to get back in the flow of things. So yeah, I can understand yeah. how hard that, that is. Yeah. Build resilience. I'm sure. Well, we, we, we look forward to, to hearing that in the future from you, Shay. But yeah. I was checking out some, some other of your writing, your blogs. Um, I, I really liked um, this one I, I read earlier today talking about perception of yourself and the things that you do or don't do. Like if you perceive yourself to be lazy, you know, by hitting the snooze alarm rather than going like, hey, I needed the rest mm -hmm. and just like adjusting your perception to what's going on and, and avoiding that negative perception. Like where, where did all that come from within the, the comedy and the rapper stuff? Like where, where did this, this writings come from in your blog posts? Yeah. Ever since I moved out to LA about uh, six months before I got really into personal development and I, you know, and it, it made sense because I had started improv and I'm like, oh, this is really who I am. So I think these personal development books were just being, you know, drawn to me. Mm -hmm. And so it's been it's been a journey. And I think this past year has been the, a real turning point. And I feel like I'm going to have turning points just like, you know, all over. But I realized that you can't just read the books. Sure. sure. You have to, you have to take action. And I was all about the next book, the next book, the next video, the next motivational quote, but I really wasn't taking that, you know, really in deep and thinking about it. It was all on the surface. Um, so I think, and even coming from rapping uh, when I did music and I'm, still making music now uh, well talk but, to us about that a little bit how did that yeah. start how did they you call it rapid not hip-hop or you call it rap what is your what rap is your style rap yeah. okay yeah all right so get um, into that a little bit because that's that's unique yeah uh you know i did improv for two years in la and then i mean truthfully i was in a relationship uh with the girl who was it was a part of the group that I was in for improv and we just had a falling out. And so I left calm. Like I was like, I'm done. I even, even with the theater that I was at, I just saw some people who were uh, slightly selfish. Like, you know, a teammate would move up to another team and people would be like, well, why her? Well, why not me? And I'm like, mm -hmm. congrats to this person. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of left and I knew that I would find my way back, but I knew it was time for a break. And so I was in my car, I was making deliveries. Uh, and I was like, what, what do I love? I, I'm not going to be out in LA spending all this money on rent, you know, on parking tickets and not be doing something that I love. And I love music. My mom is currently in a band still. She's a lead singer, um, <clears throat> but she's performed her entire life. She had a CD. And so music has always been in my life. And so I just started, like I just put on a beat in my car and started freestyling. It was awful, uh, but it was by myself. So, you know, what does it matter? And from then I had a, and he's still my best friend to this day, Robert. Uh, so, I mean, he was 
so supportive. I was like, I want to rap. He's like, let's do it. Uh, he was also, in, he's also in music too. So he kind of helped me with the technical side. And so for the next year, we worked on an album and I, I released that and I performed a couple places and then uh, started working on a second album, but then there were just some difficulties with uh, scheduling and all of that. And so I kind of just worked on it solo and then got back into comedy. Then it was basically quarantine. And yeah, with the, the rapping, it just made me realize that I can do whatever I want. Like, I don't have to stay in comedy. People would probably be like, why, why would you leave? Like you were, I was on this, there are basically two tiers um, at this theater, this comedy theater, and I was on a second tier team, but like 700 people, uh, 60 out of 700 people got on these teams. So it was like a big deal. Sure. And so, you know, when you're at that, it's not even a super high level, but when you're growing in that way, it's like, why would you leave? And so going back after rapping and having the realization within my personal development journey, it was like, I can do whatever. That, that's a huge mindset to take on because a lot of people get wrapped up in their identity around maybe one aspect and be like, you know, I'm stuck in this. This is the only thing I'm good at. The only thing I can do. What triggered that for you? What, what made that shift to where you're like, look, I can look I, my, with my skill set, I can do whatever the heck I want. Cause that's the mindset you should have. Take the skills you have. You can apply them to multiple aspects, right? Where was that shift for you? I think it's in a consistent practice of overcoming self-doubt mm -hmm. <clears throat> because you're going to, I follow Gary Vee sure. and he's all about what makes you happy. He, he te tells you to try everything before you focus on one thing. A lot of personal development people tell you focus on one thing for 10 years, get really good at it. And that's great. The, the great thing about personal development is, there are so many tools and not there's, it's not a one size fits all. Sure. And so the, the self doubt of like, I can't do comedy or music and personal development. Why? Why? And there was no answer to that. There was no legitimate answer to that. The only answer was all wrapped up in my ego. It was like, well, I won't get to where I want to be fast enough. Mm -hmm. I won't get to be this big comedian fast enough if I divert a year to comedy or if I, or I'm sorry, if I devote a year to rap and I won't, you know, become a big comedian or a big rapper if I balance between <laughs> the either sure. or go into personal development. Um, so it was just like, what kind of life do I want to live? I, I know, and you know, if you're watching on video, you can see back here, I have some vision boards. Um, well, tell us I, a little bit about that for our, for our audience that's listening, describe a little bit of your, your vision boards back there, what you have on there. Yeah. Um, well, I have a big vision board that I made for 2020. Uh, but I have a lot of like fashion on there. Um, I have some awards, uh, a basketball game, NBA basketball game on the sideline. Uh, yeah, just like lifestyle things. Sure. I'm all about lifestyle. I want to live a certain lifestyle. And I think, uh, I don't think that's a bad thing, you know? What type of lifestyle is that? Is that like, you said, uh, sit, is that like sit on, on the on court side seats? Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, an lifestyle, NBA game? lifestyle so you're, is the rich and famous. <laughs> okay, so you're popping <laughs> champagne, Ferrari yeah. driving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. There's some mansions back there too. Um, great thing about living out in LA is you and I have a friend who was uh, in as a realtor. You go to these open houses for these mansions and see what it's like. Sure. And feel it and just like take it in. I, I just thought that was so cool. And these things have fascinated me since I was a kid. And 
so I, I mean, they're here for a reason. They're here in life for a reason. Um, I have another one that says, uh, always broadcasting good news. I made that for a, a, a small rap video that I made. And um, it was at the beginning of quarantine, actually. It's called Quarantine Rap. And I just, like, did, you know, what bad ne- what the news is telling us and then good news, like what we can really focus on. There you go. Um, yeah, so this is, this is, these are my visions. And so I think with this, you know, you can have everything you want living the life that you want, not just being a comedian, just a rapper, just a personal development, um, you know, person. Uh, yeah. But hopefully you'll be happy doing all this, right? You'll, you'll enjoy the process. So you're enjoying the process right now. Right? Yeah, that's the most important thing. It's the yeah. journey that's yeah. the most important thing, that being present and, and going for your goals, that is tremendous. That is awesome. But we got to enjoy those journeys, right? We can't, you know, take, you know, we can't wait to be happy when we get that Ferrari. We need to be happy now getting to that Ferrari, right? Absolutely. Uh, and I'm very much enjoying the journey because it's my own and because I own it. And I think I've in the past tried to control so much of my life that it was so calculated Mm -hmm. and it was like, I know what's going to happen. And then, uh, you know, something doesn't happen my way. And then I'm like, I'm off trying to do something else. But when you live in the moment, you have no idea what can happen. When you're out at a store, I just went shopping the other day. Um, and it's just, when you, when you are in that present moment, who can you meet? What can you see? What experiences can you have? Uh, and just, I have really been focusing on the present moment lately. And it's so much more fun than than being like, oh, I don't have this stuff yet because I'm growing, you know, like you have to, you have to focus on the small steps. It definitely changes your perception too. When you focus on that present moment, because we're, we're always so tied up in our phones and thinking about like what's going on tomorrow or what's going on somewhere else, or, or like, you know, crying about what happened yesterday that we completely remove ourselves from the present moment. And, and like you said, you, what are you missing? you're missing a conversation with a person or meeting a new person like that. So I find that that's a, a, a huge tool to, you know, center yourself in the present moment, whether it's having a conversation or whether it's going to sleep at night. You know, when you're laying in bed and you're thinking about your list of what to do tomorrow and what got done today or what didn't get done, that's not what you need to worry about. You need to worry about it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that idea of being in the present moment and uh, uh, really focusing on that is super important. I, I like that. Yeah, and she- uh, the, as I drove over from LA to Atlanta, I had a lot of time. It was like sure, what, you know, almost thirty hours. Uh, but I listened to the power of now, and I recommend it for everybody. I really like Eckhart Tolle's voice. Mm-hmm. It's just so calming to me. Some people can't stand it. And if I were to read the book, I don't know if I could really engage with it in a way that I could with the, the audio book. Um, but it's a really it's, good book. Oh my gosh. It's so yeah. good. It's, I, it's, I have to say though, I had to listen to it and fast forward because mm-hmm. like he speaks so slowly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, mm, I can listen to it like two times the speed on audible. I'm a fan of listening to audiobooks as mm-hmm. well, but definitely a really good book. Um, and Paul and I have talked about it a couple of times, you know, his two books, the power of now, and then um, a new earth, I believe is his mm-hmm. second one. But yeah. So some of the things you've talked about, like you know, the, the present moment or like the, the ego that really affects you and that self doubt. Um, but kind of going back to something you said earlier when you were, reading all these books and and gaining all this information, you know, there's that saying, you know, knowledge is power. That's not completely true because it's implied knowledge that is true power because you can read all this stuff, but if you're not applying it to your life, then what use is it? 
Mm-hmm. So how did you get to that shift or that realization? Because it sounded like you came to that and was like, hey, I'm, I'm reading all these books. I'm not doing anything with it. When did you start actually taking action and, and applying this into your life with the things you're doing? Yeah, I think quarantine was a super huge shift for me. I was laid off and I, I was working at a retail store and something I didn't enjoy. I was there basically Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. with an hour travel both ways. And then quarantine hit and I got to be at my home and I got to work on my art. And so not everybody has that opportunity, uh, but that was when I really took in you know, the fact that I had time and that I may never get this back. And I eventually went back to work. And I'm, and I, you know, I think kind of the whole time I was fearing that a little bit Uh, is something that I had to get over as well. But knowing that there's no other time, like, what am I waiting for? I just turned 30. I think that's a really, (laughs) I turned 30 in July. Like, I think that's a really good point in your life to like question. Uh, Any, any point is a good point. Uh, But I think for myself, it's like 30. Like, I don't, I don't really care about age. I'll do whatever I want to do at whatever age, but it is, it is a a good, you know, stopper. but yeah, it was just, there's, there's, I'm wasting time if I don't buckle down and have the discipline to really believe in myself. And I think it is a discipline I, because you, it's a, it's a mindset, right? And you can write down a gratitude list, but that's all physical. And if it never really hits your subconscious mind, then like it does no good. It just bounces off. Sure. You think you're doing good and then and then you never really change the other twenty three hours and fifty minutes of your day. So where do you see your vision in five years? Where do you what do you see yourself doing? Five let's say five years. Five years. Acting quite a bit. I with my characters on TikTok, I want to bring them to another level. Uh, I want to make a show out of them. Um, I, I would say mostly, mostly comedy. I love music. And like I said, I'm working on music right now, but it's, it's more of a hobby. It's something that I love to do and I enjoy to do. So I'm going to continue to do it. And I, and, and I feel it was a way for me to get my feelings out. Comedy, it's really hard for me to do that. I think the type of comedy that I do too, um, which is like a lighthearted comedy. It's not like a, let's uh, take digs at myself. Um, I think maybe that goes with like the personal development persons. Like, I don't wanna hate on myself if it's just gonna come back to me. But sure. um, yeah, continue to do music as, as a real hobby. And then personal development, I think, like, because with my podcast, it's, it's something that I love helping people, um, but I don't know where I would see that in five years yet. Sure. But like you said, try everything right. and, you know, you'll probably end up whittling down and maybe some things will fall off that you're like, you know, hey, that wasn't for me, but you're, you're you're doing what you said, you know, I'm going to try everything, see what makes me happy. You said you found that the music is, is helping you express your emotions in a different way. Um, what sounds like, you know, the, the acting or the comedy, that seems like your main focus. And my, my first thought was like, how would you want that? Is it a cartoon, like a, a TV show? Like what are, what are your thoughts on that? Like how would that develop? Okay. So I'll, I'll pitch you guys my idea. Great. Just a little, a little bit. Uh, I know that's what you're asking for. I know it. Uh, so Gary, um, you guys will have to 
have to watch this uh, sometime, but Gary is this country dude who has a goatee that I write on with eyeliner. And we can and see this on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, watched, okay. I watched some of it today. I was like, okay. that's a good makeup job right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I color on some sideburns. It's okay. Good. So I just want everybody to know where they can go to see this. So yeah, if they can get it on TikTok on your handle, what's your handle? Yeah. Shade. So shade is S-H-A-Y-D. So it's like shade D beats B A T S. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I didn't, I wanted to get that out for so yeah, everybody yeah, can thank understand. You. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so he travels to businesses and and tries them out. It's like in you know an Anthony Bourdain comedy, uh, you know. But he goes into I want him to try goat yoga. I want him to try tantric breathing. <laughs> uh, I want him to go into Jimmy John's. Uh, you know, just these kind of random places um, where I think he can really bring and the something I love about my podcast is I love bringing people on to hear their stories and I think that's what I want with this show as well as comedy I want to be able to show whether it's a person or their organization or company and I want to show the world what they're doing um maybe not necessarily Jimmy John's that'll just be like a bonus sure <laughs> uh but yeah he travels and and does that? It's kind of, have you seen Billy on the Street? Yeah, it's kind of like I that, have, yeah. but okay. not I as not. aggressive. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> uh, Billy Eichner runs around New York City and like with a with a microphone and a cameraman and like rushes up to people and asks them questions. Um, but he's very he's pretty aggressive. <laughs> Gary definitely is not aggressive. Um, so so yeah, I think I think that. Um, just a playful show. Uh, man, if there's a cartoon, that would be, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. That would be hilarious. Uh, but yeah, so that, and just some other, it wouldn't be Gary and Mary, but just some other comedies. Like I am writing a feature film. I have a couple other, like, um, you know, like a Netflix series, uh, ideas and scripts. So Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're involved in so many things. Well, you, you mentioned your podcast. What's the, what's the name of your podcast? Yeah, podcast is Level Up with Shay. Okay. Yeah. I was on it. It was a great show. Yeah, Paul was on it. <laughs> it was hey, awesome. So, Paul, is, Paul is a podcast man. He's, he's always hopping on <laughs> other podcasts and, and getting people, you know, to reciprocate and be guests. So I, I, I love it. We get to meet all these great, you know, people and we get to watch Paul or listen to Paul <laughs> be on everyone's podcast. So it's, it, it's great for us. And, you know, I, I know Paul's a good guest for, for everyone else to hop on there too, but um what what are like you mentioned so many projects you're working on like how can how can our audience get a hold of you i know you put your tiktok handle out there like what are some other ways like your website or any other places that our audience can find you at shay yeah I, uh my blog is on level up with shay.com and i'm in i have 39 days left of a hundred day blog challenge which I took 11 days off unfortunately because of mm. because I had strep throat but still going strong on that and um and then my Instagram is same as my TikTok handle shade beats and yeah I level up with Shay on Instagram as well and I just started a Patreon okay. so um are you what does that mean Patreon so a Patreon is a subscription based service uh, oh i think i signed up for that didn't i i think i, I did okay um <laughs> you sent me an email and i said oh i is. signed up for it so he doesn't know what it is <laughs> you'll see the, the charge on your credit card yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> uh but i'm making some extra gary and mary videos and like behind the scenes stuff and so you can pay your subscription fee five ten twenty five dollars is like where you get to talk to me um and we can talk about whatever but that's per month and you just get some extra like fun stuff with me that I don't put on TikTok. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's, it's new for me too. So um, I'm excited to, to get more involved and to get other people involved. So yeah, please join me on that. 
Yeah, and we'll make sure to put all your uh, contact information and all your you know links down there in the show notes so everybody can reach out to you. Thank you. What, what would you say is your major focus moving forward? Is it, is it really the comedy or what is the one thing that you really want to focus on moving forward, Shay? My comedy. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, I, like I said, I'm writing a feature film and I think a lot of it is, you know, focusing when I'm, when I'm writing that I'm focused exclusively on that. And then you have to send it out to people to, to get revisions. And I have a few friends who can do that. So just do everything I can to, you know, to get my part done and kind of send it out so other people can get their hands on it. Uh, And then, you know, Gary and Mary, I make that, I make some other TikToks too that aren't Gary and Mary, but uh, yeah, I think, I think those are, are my main focus. Um, and stand up. I mean, all of that. I just want to be able to meet more people, especially just moving to Atlanta about a month ago. Mm-hmm. I want to to make connections. And I know there are some amazing comedians out here. And yeah, I, th- I think it's like 50% connections sure. and 50% my work. That, that makes sense, you know, because yeah. the connections help you move through and, you know, not only making friends, but, you know, getting different gigs. So that completely makes sense. But yeah. now, Shay, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of your content out there. I'm definitely going to check out more of your stuff than, than I already have. And hopefully our audience, you know, reaches out and checks out your stuff as well. Uh, we like to wrap up the show asking our guests, you know, with the, the title of our podcast and my actions and limits, what would you say is one action that people can take to really help them focus on what they're doing in life and really improve what they're doing? I, we all, I say we all, a lot of us know the practices that we need to be doing. A lot of us know that we need to be getting up at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. to do the things that we need to do. And I think it's just the consistency of doing those things the consistency i'll say to consistency and persistence of just of knowing that you aren't going to work out one day and have a six-pack you have to know that i need to get this workout in today and then i need to get it in tomorrow and the next day but you're not focused on tomorrow or the next day you are focused on today until you go to sleep and then tomorrow's a new day take it a day at a time right a day at a time absolutely and the opposite of that i think we touched on this a little bit you know with all these self-imposed limits that we put on ourselves what would you say is the major one that you've seen either with yourself or other people you've come in contact with that we need to remove immediately that can help us make a lot of progress i think it is doubt it's the doubt that you that you hold on to saying that you can't do these things. Like who is to say that you can't do these things? Sure. You know, like Amen to people that. have people have done incredible things and there's just there's no way that something is impossible. Uh, and I, it just all starts in your mind. So you have to get rid of doubt and, and the lack of belief that you can do what you want. Yeah, I, I really like that. And I, I heard something recently, it was put very well. It was like that self-doubt that you impose on yourself. You would never tell that to a friend. You would never tell that to a family member. So you can't do this. You're not good enough. So why the hell are you saying it to yourself? <laughs> yep. So yeah. it's, I, I think that's a huge thing to understand that doubt is there and to not listen to it. Like you talked about in Edgar Tolle's book, you can listen to the ego and go, I hear you, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm not paying attention to what you're saying right now. So I really like that, Shay, but yeah. thank you for sharing your story with us. You know, again, we're, we're excited to check out more of your content and I hope our audience, you know, reaches out to you as well and checks you out on TikTok and Instagram and your website and everywhere else. So 
Um, you're such a great guest and we Thank wish you. you the best of luck in all of the projects that you're out there doing because you're doing thank so you. many. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show, Shay. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. So much fun. Shay, Shay was such a good guest. I'm glad she could come on. Man, she's involved in a lot of different projects. You know, I, I give her credit for the amount of energy that that has to take to be doing comedy, doing you know music and rapping, and now she's working on a film and her blog and you know doing these uh, acting projects or TikToks. Like, I don't know if I have the energy for all that, Paul. But. <laughs> Yeah, the thing that came to my head was you got to have a strong stomach, especially when I when I hear somebody wants to get into comedy. I, I alluded to it a little bit in in my experiences doing presentations, not doing comedy at all, but trying to get a, you know, just a courtesy laugh. And there's times where I didn't, and it threw me off. So yeah. I couldn't imagine getting up there in, in in front of everybody, you know, just brand new and coming up with uh, material. I know that she doesn't do too much stand up, but it looks like she's going to start trying it. Mm -hmm. Tried to get her to do it on, on the Axis Limits podcast. Couldn't get her to go, but <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> She's still working through, you know, the nerves of sharing that type of stuff. So I, I, I get that. I get that aspect, you know. Um, but, you know, it's a, a lot of different projects. And, 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 I, and I do like that, that idea. You know, try a lot of things. Um, there, there is a fine line there though, right? It's like, are you overloading yourself? Are you, is one area suffering because of the amount of projects that you're working on? Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe she'll narrow the focus a little bit and, and a couple things might fall away when you really figure out, Hey, this is my passion here. You know, what, well, yeah, what I think let it flow, about? let it flow until yeah. you really find it. I, I, yeah. I say, go do everything. Yeah. And then once you start to, to get, you know, a rhythm going, then go, okay, let me, let me, let me hone in on this in a, for a little bit. I, mm -hmm. I think, and, but until you're at that point, uh, then, you know, yeah. keep it, keep it broad because uh, I think the biggest reason why people don't accomplish their goals is because they truly don't want it. Yeah. No, I, I, I'd agree with that because maybe it's something that their parents told them to do or it's what they thought sounded good or they're like, oh, th this will make me a lot of money. But it's like, are you are you happy you know, doing that? So have you tried enough things to figure out what is going to make you happy doing that? So uh, I, I agree with that. Try a whole bunch of things. And then, you know, in that slow process, you can help whittle it down and go, OK, this was cool. Not really something I'm passionate about or. Or like she said with her music, she's like, her music is like an outlet for her emotions. Great. You know, maybe it's not her passion. Like it sounds like, you know, her um, acting and comedy and those skits are like, that sounds like number one. And, but the music is definitely serves a purpose. So, but you know, she found that kind of after the fact. So great, you know, realizing these different things and different activities that you do in your life that serve a purpose and go, okay, maybe it's not going to be my money maker, but hey, I still need it in my life. So I, I like the idea of trying a whole bunch of things and, and figuring out what you're really passionate about. So I agree. Yeah. So another great guest. Um, let's go ahead and uh, wrap up the show with another segment of Ask Paul Anything. Um, I found a, a, a question i i'm curious i'm curious how you're going to answer it i'm i'm already bracing myself for for the re response but um so this question came in from jessica in nebraska and it says paul what's the most ridiculous fact that you know what's the uh, most ridiculous fact that i know uh Gosh, I don't even know what the most ridiculous fact I know. Um, I just assumed you knew lots of ridiculous uh, facts. <laughs> uh, um, I, well, I don't even know. Like, I, I think the, uh, the um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, I think you stumped me on this one. <laughs> uh, a ridiculous fact. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, 
I think the 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 uh, the, the um, oh here's here's one. Uh, when you're dead, your fingernails still grow. <laughs> that that's a pretty ridiculous fact. There. That's, uh... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica, for uh, sending a question in that actually it stumped Paul for a while. I'll, I'm yeah. going to call that a stump. I'm going to call that one right there. That was, that was a little bit of a stump. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't BS it because you asked for a fact. <laughs> There's a wiggle room I could go with, but you said fact. I'm like, oh, man. You're like, oh, no, now I'm restricted on, on yeah, Exactly. I don't want people calling in going, that's not really a fact. That's, not. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking about in my head. I, I was thinking, should I just I, make something up and then uh, – you know, I just assumed, I was like, Paul's got some random facts. Because you know, like, a, it's like people's names, like, like their their original names when they have stage names. That that one always throws me for a loop when you put those out there. And I'm like, who? And you're like, oh, yeah. What's the one you always say? Stephanie Jeremata? Jeremata, yeah. Stephanie Jeremata. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah, for Lady Gaga, and like no one, no one knows that, and you just you're just spouting them all out, and I'm like, okay, just just say Lady Gaga, just just. But thank you for sending in your questions to the Actions and Limits podcast. Make sure to continue to send them in to Actions and Limits at gmail.com, and you can get your question featured on the show, and you might even stump Paul again. <laughs> you can only be so lucky. Well, great show, Paul. Uh, another great week, man. Yeah, for Justin Atherton, this is Paul Fortune. We'll see you next week. All right. Thank you for listening to the show. Don't miss an episode. Click and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on your favorite podcast platform and find us on Instagram and Facebook under Actions and Limits to stay updated on all our upcoming content. Continue to email the show at actionsandlimits at gmail.com for our segment Ask Paul Anything. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week.